So you had good role models having your brothers, your dad there. So this way, it keep you on that path that you would, you know, had to deal with the the hood shit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I still dealt with it in a sense of, you know, we got in fights, we got into things that, you know, guys was wanting, you know, to buff their chest up and you know, I had to buff mm -hmm. back. But at the same time, it wasn't something that, you know, I caught myself up in by going to jail. None of us really like hit the bricks like that. And for us, like, I think that was a headship and what we truly believed in and, and, and God saved us from a lot of those mishaps and a lot of things that took place, you know, just for unseen eyes. And for us, it was just battling the, the spear every day, you know, something was happening every day. And even sometimes so much so for me, um, I got so into involved and heavy in the game that, you know, our house was like, I don't even know if I had to put in an example, um, somewhere probably like half a mile, half a mile to under a mile, a little bit under a mile from, mm -hmm. um, I, I'll just say a mile from my high school. And so okay. on Fridays, it's almost like game days, whatever the case may be. I will walk that with a stick every Friday um, to go to, to the high school. And I would walk from school and walk to home. With, with, with a regular stick, not a stick that they call in the ratchet. Nah, <laughs> it was almost like they call it they call the it the Moses, they call it the Moses stick. I got it from my oh. dad when he went up okay, to the okay. mountain. He had you know giving it to me, so I ended up walking with it, and yeah. every um every Friday. And they was like, yeah, here come Josh's Moses stick. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a sign of a uh, uh, a true um a true true realness to myself and who I was and my my differentness that was about me, if that's a word. I don't, I don't think anybody unique. wanted to fuck with the Fire Strong, the Norman <laughs> brothers anyway, right? Nah, nah, because that's the thing. Like, they knew that I had brothers and they knew that, like, we was tight and, and nobody really would know that, like, like screw with us in that in that sense because they know that oh man we had a brother at every level at every grade so mm. we all was kind of tight in that sense and that's that's the thing that kept us safe though all right so now you go to coastal carolina as a walk on yeah yeah now you had you know thought you were getting the full ride but now you're a walker so now you got to put the work in now yeah man i had to put it where i had to grind man that and that those years right there those two years um, in between high school and getting into Coast Carolina and even walking on was probably the hardest years, like like literally one of the hardest years of my life because it made this transition so much easier. Like mm. going through something like that was just, all right, like took it on the chin, what's next? And that was just me, you know, coming out there, getting away from home and that green wind, that whole entire mindset of what was going on there and coming out to Murder Beach, something I didn't know with my brother and living on the couch with him and two other roommates and for a whole like year in a sense of a semester to a year and, you know, going out there, getting a job as a mental health technician with him and another one of his roommates, Big Les Rice, and just literally going through the way, learning the way, again, through on my own now. You know, I was in a um, Camry, a green Camry. All the door handles just broke off of it. So <laughs> you couldn't really get in there. I had to have a key to just try to open it. <laughs> Living on the couch, and I remember in the parking lot, timing myself in 40s. Running down the street, running down the street at night, just time myself. I remember even crying sometimes doing it. And one night I was end up, I they ended up going on um, a trip. Uh, the team went on a trip, and I still was, you know, taking classes at Ori Georgetown Tech and going through it, everything there. And I ended up forgetting my key, so my brother had it, the extra one, but he was gone on a trip with the mm -hmm. team. And so I was locked out. And so I just had to stay in the car. I slept in the car for like, like, like two days, almost three days <laughs> until he got back because like I didn't have a key to get in. So that was kind of crazy. 
Oh, it's not like you had to sleep in the car because this was life. No, you just made left your key. Nah, like it was like the situation though, because I stayed on the couch too, so I didn't have the keys and I couldn't like get into right. with the property manager or anything. So I just was like, dang, sometimes I that that would happen. And I would right. stay in the car and it was just like, okay, this is the way of life, but that's just where I'm at right now. But I knew I wasn't gonna be there forever. This was just yeah. a trial. This was just a test for me to go through. So that built mental, you know, strength for me to like now when I'm walking on, I'm coming out here and I'm seeing these guys that's playing at Coastal. I'm like, that's just a walk in the park. Like, it's nothing. And when I got there, finally showed up and arrived, uh, Coach Washington. He was my recruiting coordinator. He came there and I literally thought I was going to be in safeties with him and my brother because that's what I played in high school. Then they was like, uh, we're going to switch your position. <laughs> I was like, what? I was hot. I was heated by it. And right. so it's like you could play corner. And corner, like, when that, that position, it really don't get much action like a strong safety dude. Like, you are in the mix. You are in all the action. Right, and so, safety. absolutely. And so at corner, you're just out there. It's like, picking weeds i call it <laughs> yeah you get tried every now and then and they just stop messing with you and just like whatever and so i really had that about myself like i went to switch position and i played it easily and so i remember just so that's what i was gonna do i call it uh when i'm out there i'm cutting grass so i knew this was gonna be my spot and so I just worked at it and I worked at it super hard to the point where like even after practice, I got more practice in and the lights would kind of come off and the janitorial was like, hey, look, it feels closed. I'm like, to who? <laughs> <laughs> Time to go. And you're like, nah. Like, nah, man, I call it, I'm going to cut some grass. So you know how you cutting grass with a lawnmower? <laughs> like right, I'm, yeah. cu I got my cleats and I'm cutting so grass, I'm cutting with, my grass with my cleats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So I was, I would do that and, and I would be so entrenched in that situation and and I remember like going into my sophomore season um this is a funny story so I came into my office coach's office and I'm still on a walk-on so I'm still paying right and still taking aid financial aid and, and stuff and I'm like all right so I'm here I did everything you guys asked me to do you know I I, I got my grace where I needed to be I got everything that you wanted me to do for football wise like, so so what is it and he was like, well, you know, you, you got to talk to coach. So I was like, you know what? Whatever. I let that go. I didn't even bother it anymore. So I went and played my freshman year. Um, my brother got hurt. I think he was going into the draft that year. He ended up getting hurt. And so I ended up coming in back to him, made my first career interception, went over to him, saw him with the towel on his head, gave him the ball and everything. Wow. I was, was just that, like, Was that your first game? Was it the first game? That was game? my first game, North Carolina A&T. AT, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got hurt that year, that game, and it was so and crazy. And then after that, that's when you started. You had, like, I think, what, seven starts after that? After yeah, that it was because, like, um, he was um, playing with Whitman. He was an a All American. He was an um, academic All American. And so I ended up coming in for him. And then, so at one time, it was me and my brother on the same field. Wow, that was so dope. crazy. And yeah, and I had that whole entire spirit about me that I just wanted to be better than him <laughs> and yeah. compete. And and he probably competed. had the same feeling too. I can't let him be better he than did. me. <laughs> <laughs> it was just so crazy, man. And like, I just, my ceiling, I just felt like I was hitting scrods. And so I played the rest of the year out and I let things be. And so at that time I was in dramatic arts too. So I majored mm -hmm. in dramatic arts. I picked a major. And I didn't think that like, I would be really that good, but like that was the only class that I got an A in <laughs> was wow. dramatic arts. <laughs> so I like, oh shoot, I, I know this is what I'm gonna do. And it was like, it was me because it was so easy. I feel like I just come in there and like, like play somebody else as a role. Like I do that yeah. in football. So it's just like, it made sense to me. And I kind of clicked it with the uh, instructor, Robin Russell. And so I felt like we was going in that direction. So I was taking, like, I was doing plays and short films and stuff, like, at, at night while I was still, like, practicing during the day. And so they end up switching it. And they have practices at night now. And wow. then, so therefore, I couldn't really do the shows anymore. Okay. So I had to make a choice where either it's going to be the shows or it's going to be football. 
But see, I'm a walk on, so it's just like, well, shoot, I ain't giving you no money, so like you gotta make a decision. So I came into the office one day. I had on some Georgia shorts because they knew the story about Georgia and how they took the guy. I was like, shoot, if I'm gonna walk on here at Coast Carolina, hell, I might well be a walk on at Georgia where the lights are bigger, you know? And so I looked at that as like, it's like, why are you walking here with Georgia shorts? I was like, well, y'all not paying me, so what am I here for? You know, I literally did that. <laughs> yeah. So that next day, I got called from my head coach, like, Josh, we want you to come up here. I was like, Coach Bennett. And so the one that did the whole cats and like meow and stuff like that, mm -hmm, you ever mm -hmm, remember that mm -hmm. one? That segment he did from ESPN where he came on, he was talking about the cats and the dogs. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was kind of a little bit of myself. That was me. But, was <laughs> <laughs> but so he called me into his office and we was talking. And so I was like, look at the desk. And I looked at the desk and he was like, look at that. I pulled a paper and it was like my name on it. And I looked down and I read like, oh, shoot, it's a full ride. Oh, full so ride scholarship. A full ride scholarship. So I like. He was like, yeah, so didn't I say we was going to take care of your son? And I was like, yeah, you did say that. And I was like, okay, so so what you think? I said, hmm, Coach, let me get back with you a little bit. I, I, I'll come back to this. I stepped outside. <laughs> I started to think. Like, I really did. I started thinking about, like, man, like, I'm giving up this acting stuff to come in here and do this. So I was just, like, putting all that together. And I said to myself, like, this is Division One AA. Like, how many people come from here, like, and make it to the pros instead of Division One? How right. many come from right. here? Like, like, and I started mm -hmm. to like self evaluate. Like, yeah, and almost like the Matrix, like the red or the blue pill, right? Mm -hmm. Red pill. I know if I stay here, this thing will be super hard. Like, we wouldn't get much like looks on TV or whatever the case may be. But if you stood out, like out of the whole pool, like they will come. And then the blue pill, like I could have walked on, went to Georgia, got a full ride the next year, played the year and went and got first round, all of that stuff. And it would have been a story written, right? But like, I didn't come in this in a blue pill easy way. You know what I'm saying? Right, I came right. in this a hard red way. Pill. Like red I pill. took the red pill to the point where like, okay, it's going to be tough, but this is what toughness is made out of. This is going to get me prepared and it's going to help me go for the next season or for the next level because I needed this. And so I did it. And man, when I signed up for it, I came back into the office like, we're going to do it. <laughs> and once right. I did signed- Did you go that same day? You went back that same day? Or yeah, like I went back that same day because I, I had to step out. He caught me mm -hmm. off guard. So I had to re-catch myself. I had all these things going through and I had to be like, all right, man, like I'll give you my answer by the end of the day. And I came back in, I called my parents, told them what was going on, ended up signing it. And literally like that spring, man, I I went out there, I went to FCA. Um, I did the whole thing out there in um, Orlando, came back rejuvenated, feeling fresh, spiritually, mentally. And that sophomore season, man, I broke every record there was at that school for far as a defensive back. In the freshman season? No, that was my sophomore season. The so sophomore season, that's when you became a first team All Big South. First right? team All Big South, All American. I think that that season, it was that season where uh, I tied my brother uh, in three interceptions in one game, and I ended up having eight or nine interceptions. I broke school record for the interceptions, most interceptions. And uh, became all American. The fabulous fifty, you did fabulous, fabulous fifty. 50. All, I had a whole bunch of stuff, man. Honestly, accolades on top of it, and it was just like, man, like who is this kid down here in this little old fish pool with a big pond to him, <laughs> you know? Right. And so I made it my own oyster, yo. And and so from there, you know, my eleventh grade, everybody. I mean, when I went to obviously the the, the junior, I say eleventh grade, year. but my junior year. It was just guys like started to realize who I was and like stayed away. So it wasn't so much impactful as it was my sophomore season, but it was because they wouldn't try as much. Mm -hmm. And right. I had a moxie about me that I wanted you to. <laughs> right, 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 right. And that I, was so the respect I, level. Don't even come owned, on the side. There you go. I owned the position. I owned the field. And it was just like, gosh, man, I, I knew right then I'm hitting strides. So right then I feel like 
shoot, I think that was like the the lockout year or something. I felt like, shoot, man, I go to the league after this year. Like I wanted to leave early. And so I kind of like kind of put that out there without really saying it. <laughs> right. And so going into my 12th grade, um, I went to go train. Senior. Going into See, there you go. I guess you every time. When my senior year, right. <laughs> thank you, Craig. When my senior year, um, I went to go train out in Atlanta. It was just this uh, WPI. Uh, I went to go train out there. So I went with the team, you know, because my mindset was like, I knew exactly where I want to go and where I want to be and how I want to get there. And this training that I get with a team is not as what I would get outside of this. Right. And so I would train and they thought like I was training for the draft <laughs> and yeah. not for like coming back. And so I end up getting hit with like um, an investigation, like wow. because like they thought like I was taking it, it, um, money. Money. Like, and I had an agent yeah. and I was legally like going in and doing this early before the draft. Like, and I was just like, where are all this coming from? So I was getting investigated and all that stuff. So I had to stop training, coming back to them and, you know, going through that whole thing. And my dad had to come on site for that. And I went through a whole like NCAA arbitration. It, it, it was right. it was so much that was going on to the point where I almost missed the 12th grade, well, well the senior season of right. the whole thing. And so that all happened. And then I just, you know what, screw it. I just came back in the fold and like me and coach kind of like reconciled like what we had going on. And so that, that senior season was almost like a blessing in disguise too, because it was a lockout, all that stuff happened with the league. And so I'm finishing now my uh, senior year. It's almost just like a um, a pass year, you know, just just passing through. And I well, didn't. They called you the Dark Knight. So how do you pass through <laughs> being nicknamed the Dark Knight, bro? I wasn't nicknamed that yet, though. <laughs> it wasn't that wasn't in your senior year. That wasn't my senior year. That wasn't okay. my senior year. So um, my senior year was just like I just went through that whole setup, and like I ended up finishing. And so I didn't even, I went to go train um, at Parisi's out in New Jersey. So I got an agent right after the season was over, went and trained out there in New Jersey and really didn't even finish through school. And so I left early. I left like during that next semester and went to go, thought I was going to, well, went to the draft. Um, and that was a whole experience in itself when I went through that whole thing. 